Hi, my name's Leo and I'm a boat builder and a sailor and I'm on a mission to rebuild and restore this 110 year old classic sailing yacht Tally Ho. So it's Sunday morning here, uh, just released episode 85 yesterday and obviously now we're going to be doing more planking, getting into the swing of it a bit more hopefully. So while I was editing the last video, Pete managed to get one of the garboards cut out. Now those are the planks that are right at the bottom of the boat. They go right up against the rabbit in the keel timber and they are mostly fastened by being screwed into the keel. Pete's already cut out the garboard on the starboard side, uh, the starboard garboard, you might say. So he's going to be getting that fastened into place tomorrow. Okay, well the garboard is pretty much ready to go on, but before it does, we've got one important thing to do, and that is to put the stopwaters in. Now stop waters are wooden dowels which go through the joints in the centerline timbers um, and their purpose is to stop water <laughs> of course from getting from the outside of the boat to the inside of the boat. So over most of the boat's surface that job is done by the hull planking um, and that is waterproof and made watertight by caulking but we can't cork these centerline joints between these timbers and these are bedded in tar and tar paper and so they should be watertight but over many years as the timbers expand and contract and so on it's possible that these joints will open up a little bit and allow small amounts of water to get in and if that happens water could go into this joint outside the rabbit travel along it travel behind the planks and track all the way along that joint until it's inside the rabbit and right inside the boat and then come out and into the bilge and make a leak so what we do to prevent that is to put stop waters, softwood dowels, through all the centerline timber joints just inside the rabbit. And the reason we use softwood is that if water does get in there, it'll hit that softwood, that softwood will swell up with the moisture, and because it swells up inside an already tight hole, it will create a really watertight seal, like a gasket. Now one of the best timbers for making stop waters is cedar because not only is it a softwood, it's also very rot resistant. Um, I happen to have some Port Orford cedar around so I'm going to use a bit of that uh, to make these stop waters. Once I've made the dowels, I'm going to hammer them in um, and then cut off the ends. I'm going to put them in dry uh, with no glue or bedding or anything um, because I don't want to create a barrier that's actually going to prevent that piece of softwood from absorbing water. Because if water does get to it, it's important that it sucks up that water um, and then swells up, sealing the gap. Now one interesting thing I noticed when I was cutting out these first planks is that they are very straight uh, and that's good, that was the intention when lining out to get them as straight as possible uh, to follow the natural curves of the boat. But I also noticed that once I cut them out they edge set very easily and that was obvious when the forward plank, uh, once I cut it out it sprung a lot. The tension in the wood made that plank change shape after I cut it out but it was very easy to bend it to edge set it back into its proper shape. So I've decided that while the planks are as straight as these ones, I think I can get away with cutting them completely straight on one edge and then just marking off the widths on the other edge and cutting any shape into that and then basically just edge setting them into position. Uh, and the benefit of that will be I don't need to make a template for each plank. So to try out this theory, the first thing I'm gonna do is uh, basically cut out a very long straight edge.
Okay, well I did screw up a little bit. I put that first plank on the boat without adjusting the position of the stem. I'd forgotten basically that I had to pull the stem back into the boat before I put any planks on. And the reason for that is that the stem it continuously sags and it's held up by a big wooden post which sort of just sinks into the ground more and more and that's fine. Every now and then I just whack the wedges from either side a little bit more and it pushes the stem back up. It's only a small amount that it moves, it's really no big deal, but I forgot to do that before I put the first plank on. And of course really it needs the bolt that goes through the breast hook and through the stem to hold that stem in there for good, but we haven't got around to putting that in yet. So the long and short of it is I just have to spring out that hood end of that first plank, pull the stem back in until it's touching the beam shelf, and then I'll know it's in the right position. I'll probably have to trim the front of that plank a little bit so it'll fit back in to the stem rabbit and then we should be good. It's not a big deal. I'm kicking myself a little bit that I forgot to do it before, but at least I didn't fasten the hood ends because then the fastening holes will be in the wrong place and it'll be a little bit more annoying. Okay, so now I've made the, uh, the longest straight edge in the world, I can try out my new plan of cutting a straight edge well, on one side of the plank. Um, so these planks I'm about to cut out, they're the same planks as the ones that I already put on the starboard side, but these ones are going to go on the port side. All right, so now I'm going to show you how I modified a specific tool uh, in order to make planking quicker. Now, if you follow my Instagram or my Facebook or Patreon, you probably will have seen this and know what it is. But if you haven't, I've got a challenge for you, which is to try and guess what I'm making before it's finished. Okay, as I'm sure some of you will have guessed, this is a rolling bevel circular saw, as made famous by Lu or Z, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, Acorn to Arabella, Western Flyer Project, and I'm sure used by 
many other shipwrights around the world. This is a very, very unsophisticated uh, version of that concept. I'm sure there's gonna be some criticism of my ghetto engineering and dodgy metalwork skills, but it only took an hour or two to make this modification and it does seem to work perfectly. So uh, I'm pretty pleased with that. It operates simply by turning this thread from a clamp, uh, which pushes the saw up away from its base, uh, therefore changing the bevel between the base of the saw and the blade of the saw. Uh, and it does that nice and smoothly with this thread. And then there's a little gauge here with some lines that just indicate what that angle is. So the idea is that you run this along your piece of wood. You've got the angles written on the piece of wood. And as you're going along, you can look at those angles, turn this thread and change the angle of the saw to match the angle of the edge of the plank that you want to cut. Yeah, much better. What's going on? We are hanging a plank. <laughs> I don't actually know what's going on over there because I can't see it. <laughs> I haven't been able to see it this whole time. At a certain point, we'll clamp this side and then I'll be involved. But for now, I'm just like a fancy thing to hold things up. So we've now got the garboard and the first broad hung on the starboard side of the boat and it's really cool to see them on the boat there. Um, Pete's done a great job with these planks, I'm really impressed. There's a little more fastening to do on these and uh, then the next planks above them will be going on. I'll be working towards closing that gap between the two levels of planking. Now I did want to mention that the work that you see in this video is only a fraction, a tiny fraction of all the work that is actually going on here. Um, everybody, both myself and Pete and all the guys who are helping are really busy with all sorts of different jobs, both on and off the boat, only a tiny amount of which actually get filmed. And that's true every week basically, but I feel like especially this week, as we're transitioning into this planking phase, there's a lot of other stuff going on, whether it's managing people, developing processing, prepping timber and fastenings and tools, all this other behind the scenes stuff, which actually takes a lot of time. The other cool thing is that all the guys who are sort of volunteering their time here, they're all interested in being involved long term, which is really awesome. Um, and so they've started doing a sort of rotational thing where they take turns to take a bit of time off. And that's gonna make it more sustainable for them to um, help out here for longer, which is really great for me because once someone is trained up in sort of how we do things here, then they're a lot more useful. And hopefully it's good for them too, because they can stay longer and learn more about the boat building work that we're doing here. Okay now, what is this? Does anybody know? I'm sure many people do know out there. This is a very uh, important and traditional boat building tool. Although they come in many different styles and shapes and sizes. In England, we call this a dolly. Uh, in the States, they call it a buck. And this is used for dollying or bucking a rivet. 
So one poor bugger has to sit or stand outside the boat and push that into the head of the rivet and hold it there with their body weight, lean on it while uh, the person inside the boat peens the head over and if no one was doing this they would start hitting it and the rivet would come out of the hole. Um, about eight inches uh, of this is filled with uh, a solid piece of lead and then the rest is filled up with live oak which is jammed down onto it with a bolt through it. There's no movement in it at all, it's got to be solid like that to absorb the impact um, that the hammer is making on the rivet. I spent plenty of time holding one of these underneath the boat. It's not fun really um, after doing it for days on end and uh, these guys have got quite a bit to do so um, that's part of learning about boat building I guess and um, I certainly appreciate them being here to help with it. <laughs> what are you wearing there? Uh, I have to sit in the rain so I'm wearing a waterproof diaper to keep the water out instead of in. <laughs> Now not every plank fastening in the boat can be a rivet because there's some places you just can't get to the back of. For example, many of the fastenings in the lower broads and the garboards go straight into the keel or the deadwoods and all the hood ends in the bow uh, have to fasten into the stem rabbit. So in those places we're going to be using silicon bronze screws. And I'm going to be using these screws which are number 20s. Um, that is the gauge, the thickness of the screw, they're slotted countersunk 3 inch wood screws. Now I want to mention the guy who I purchased these from, uh, he gave me his cost price as a way of supporting the project which I really appreciate and he's actually just started up his business um, supplying top quality fastenings. Judging by the 400 or so that I purchased from him, they are extremely good quality, uh, very consistent and I've been assured that they are manufactured to the highest quality specifications. So I'm certainly going to be purchasing from them again in the future and if you guys want to do so too uh, the company name is Fairwind Fastenings. They've supported this rebuild so uh, go show them some love and uh, buy some really great quality bronze wood screws. So at this point we've got one set of planks, one strake uh, on the top sides of the boat, one on either side. And in the last episode I talked about how I cut those planks with square edges so there's no bevels on either edge of those planks. Uh, now I've measured the bevel between the frame and that square edge on every frame and we've transferred those marks onto this board and so the plank that I'm going to cut out of this board is going to have one square edge the length of the boat and the other edge is going to match the angle of the edge of the plank that's already on the boat and that way it should fit tightly up against it um, on the inside of the plank. On the outside of the plank we're going to have a corking bevel so that's going to be a, a purposefully open seam on the outside. 
Now I'm going a little bit overkill with the clamps uh, on this first plank, um, but we just want to make sure that the baden can't slip at all. Uh, if it slips, that means we're cutting into the plank, so we don't want to do that. And I was finding when I was testing the saw um, that it tend to push into the baden a little bit and, and move it, so gonna make sure that's snug. So that's one more plank cut out. Um, the rolling bevel circular saw is really well dialed in now, it's working much better. Um, it was a problem with the base, I just sanded down the side of it to make it parallel with the actual saw blade and it's just working so much better, it's not binding up at all. What was happening is that the base wasn't exactly parallel and so the saw blade was driving the saw to the left a little bit into the baton and so of course baton can't move so the saw blade is sort of wedging itself into the wood and it was binding up and it was bending the blade and it wasn't good that's sorted now uh, it ran that whole cut really smoothly really nicely now anyone that might be concerned about Pancho um, being out here in the cold should know that uh, she is very vocal uh, when she doesn't want to be somewhere she will let me know <laughs> and in fact I only brought her out here because she knew I was working out here she was inside on her own and was screaming and screaming because she wanted to be out here joining in the fun. So after my last video, uh, when we put the first planks on the boat, uh, quite a few people were asking why I'm using butt joints instead of scarfing the planks together. When rebuilding a boat like this, uh, in this sort of situation, uh, personally I would never even consider scarfing planks together. Now the main reason uh, really is that we don't need to. A scarf plank is more prone to failure, there's more that can go wrong when you're doing it and most importantly it takes a lot longer and it uses up more timber so if you don't need to I don't know why you would. Now the reason that we don't need to here is that we're lucky enough to have good long planking stock and so we can adequately space our butts away from each other as per Lloyd's regulations and other yacht construction rules. A boat like this doesn't need scarfs, uh, it's not designed with scarfs, it wasn't built with scarfs. The trouble with scarfs, apart from 
the fact that they take a lot longer to put in and they use up more timber is that you have to rely on glue. At the very least in the feather edge of the outside plank where it feathers down to almost nothing, you can't have a mechanical fastening in that end part um, without the head being on the outside of the boat, which you wouldn't do. And so you have to rely on glue to hold that wood together. And there's so many variables with glue that personally I never like to rely on it uh, in a marine environment especially on traditional boats where you're working with varying moisture contents of timber and adverse working conditions you know you've got timber which could be could be oily it could be wet you could be in a moist atmosphere when you're building it uh, there's tar and there's all sorts of stuff around contaminants you know using glue and relying on it there's just so many things that can go wrong and even if you get it all right i don't feel like you should rely on the structural properties of glue for more than say 15 20 years and i have seen boats with scarf planks where the scarfs have peeled back at the ends because the glue's failed and there's no real quick and easy fix for that and planking isn't forever these planks will probably be replaced um, in the lifetime of this boat but i hope they'll last more than 20 years um, and the other thing is that if you do need to replace one plank or one section of plank it's very easy with a butt joint to take one plank out there's no glue to mess around with and it's very easy to see where one plank ends and the next one begins so as well as being more practical now butt joints are more practical for the shipwrights of the future i don't think i know any boat builders who would do it differently uh, unless you know then unless they didn't have a choice uh, because of the length of the timbers they're working with or some other factor Now, ever since uh, we finished the bronze casting and the bronze work and got it all polished up and I was showing it off last episode, I've received a lot of questions about how much it will cost in the end. And I know I talked a little bit about this right at the beginning of the process, but at that stage, I didn't really know uh, what the final cost would be. Of course, as I've done with many aspects of this project, I underestimated the time and the cost of um, casting all this bronze work but I can now tell you uh, how much it cost finally uh, so the bronze itself the raw material um, for everything um, we used a bit more than we thought it came to uh, approximately $14,000 uh, plus tax and the labor uh, of the foundry uh, and using their space and everything um, that came to 17,000 plus tax so that's a total of 31, about $33,000, uh, including sales tax. And if you divide that by the 47 pieces that we made, that comes to uh, pretty close to $700 um, per piece. As an average, of course, there's more bronze in the floors than there are in the knees. But that's the total cost. Um, in my naivety, I misjudged that slightly, but that's on me. And the point I really want to make is how happy I am with the work, how amazing these pieces are. Not only are they incredibly structurally strong and uh, will hold the boat together, but they're also a feature that will, um, I hope, be admired for the lifetime of this boat. And they should, I mean, they should last forever. They're, they're, they're never gonna cause any problems. So I just want to once again um, send out my thanks to everyone involved, uh, all the people that helped me with the labor uh, on the bronze work. 
um, and also to Pete and Kathy at the Foundry, um, who were so helpful um, with this project and so enthusiastic about being involved. And um, they've got a really great operation there. They're actually uh, looking for labor, I believe, at the moment. So if you are interested in working at the Foundry, of course, you'd have to be in the Port Townsend area, um, then you should get in touch with them. Laid out on this planking stock, I've got the pattern for the uh, port side garboard. Um, I've already got the starboard garboard uh, on the boat. Um, I'm actually using the same pattern for both sides of the boat. Um, so I made a pattern for the starboard garboard, made that plank, uh, and then used the same pattern and put it on the port side and made a couple minor adjustments just to just moved a couple tabs. And so my pattern process actually is I, I, I did glue tab patterning. So I take a thinner strips of door skin and then I just have a bunch of these little tabs um, and they get hot glued uh, onto the door skin and then up to the line uh, down into the rabbit um, and then up to uh, our plank line that we've drawn on the boat. The, the bottom edge of this has a zero degree bevel. I carved the rabbit so the plank sits at a zero degree angle but the top because it's concaved in the tuck of the boat there the plank actually gets smaller on its outside face um, and so uh, you have to I cut my plank from its inside face going outward um, and this pattern is a pattern of the inside face so I actually have to flip it over um, to get that face and then uh, I've scribed all my my tabs I've scribed all the lines where the tabs are and I'll put a batten up there um, and, and get my defined plank line that I can cut to. This is Angelique. We're using Angelique planking for the garbards and some of the broads, uh, as many of the broads as we can get out of the Angelique we have. Um, and it's a, it's a tougher, more durable wood, uh, a harder tropical wood. I'm able to put my pattern exactly where I want it on here, avoiding any sap wood um, so that both edges of this board, because of the way it was cut from the flitch or the log it came out of. There's a little sh strips of sapwood on both sides, um, but luckily there's plenty of heartwood left in between to, to squeeze the pattern in. Don't you think gravity is so cool, sailor? You can the real fly. question is which one laid down first? <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't me, I swear. You didn't see me, but I was definitely doing stuff earlier today. So I just got the port side garboard cut out and ready to hang on the boat. Um, I did that, uh, I think you saw how I did my patterning. Um, I cut the whole plank out just with a cirque saw. The bottom of the plank is a square edge. It sits into the rabbit. So that's pretty easy to cut. You just cut that at zero degrees. The top edge, I, um, I put a bevel on because it's in the tuck of the boat. It has under bevels when you're cutting from the back. You can run the, roll the bevels with your cirque saw. Um, you might see Leo use his homemade rolling bevel cirque saw. Um, I have one too, I just haven't used it yet. Um, but uh, I like this saw actually because the protractor, the, the um, angle readout faces you when you're, when you're behind the saw. So you can look right down and see all your angles. And it's got this pretty good handle up front which helps you steer it really well. Um, so I can run my saw at one degree or two degrees or three degrees. 
um, and then stop, you know, take my finger off the trigger and I'll let the blade continue running and I'll just uh, unlock the, the bevel on it and, and turn it one more degree and lock it again and then keep rolling my bevel uh, or keep rolling with the cut. Um, so you do have stops and starts down the whole uh, cut, but when you uh, clean the edge up with a plane, um, it, it, it fares out. Um, and, and you, you kind of cut wide of your line anyway. Uh, I usually leave my pencil line and a, and a sliver of wood. After you cut it out, um, I use a, a Moto Beef power planer and uh, clean up all the saw marks and get it pretty close to my pencil line or, or start taking my pencil line. And then I'll, I'll do a couple passes with a hand plane. One edge of each of our planks is gonna have a, a corking bevel or a caulking bevel. Um, and that's just a, a second bevel on the outside edge of the plank um, that opens it up for us to pack cotton and oakum in later on. So I do that with, you know, you scribe, I mark that, and then uh, use a power plane again for most of it, um, and then clean it up pretty with a hand plane um, right down to the line. Um, and then this is gonna get rounded out. So the back, back edge of it, where it goes up against the heel, it's going to get a little round over uh, to fit snugly against the, the keel and the, the frame heels down there. Um, and then we're going to red lead actually the whole rabbit, the, the keel, um, and then put a strip of bedding down at the, the, the rabbit seam and then up the stem a little and back at the dead wood and up the stern post. Did I get everything? <laughs> Meanwhile, I'm working on getting the next plank up on the port side top sides. So working just above Pete there, um, this will be the second topside plank on the port side. We've got two full strakes hung on the starboard side now, and this is the first plank of the second uh, full strake on the port side. Uh, plus we've got the broads on the starboard side as well, so we've got a total of uh, eight planks on the boat so far. Hopefully two more going on in the next hour or two. Yeah, So I've just made this uh, rolling bevel cut with the circular saw and um, I'm just going to check the accuracy of the bevel using a bevel gauge. So um, here is a three degree mark so it should be about three degrees here hopefully. And just tighten that up. And let's see. Oh that is uh, spot on. I don't know if you can see that but it's right on the three degree line there. And I haven't touched this surface with a plane or anything yet, it's just the saw, you can still see the saw marks on it. Uh, so let's check another one. Uh, let's check five degrees down here. Yeah, and that's looking really good. It's pretty much spot on five degrees there. 
So you can see that uh, this rolling bevel circular saw is really quite accurate. It's you know probably more accurate than the actual measuring of the bevels <laughs> from the frames. Certainly more than accurate enough for our purposes. Now I made sure the basin was nice and fair before I made this cut, so this should be a pretty fair curve here. So all I have to do really now is just run the hand plane down it um, very quickly just to take off the saw marks um, and just check for any unfairness. There might be a few very small lumps or bumps that I can take out. And then I'll be ready to go on to the next stage, uh, which is to cut the corking bevel in, cut both ends of the plank uh, and then back out the inside, hollow out the inside so it'll fit on the curve of the frames. All right, so that's all we got time for right now. Uh, it is Thanksgiving day today here in the US on the day that I'm filming this. Um, so happy Thanksgiving, uh, wherever you are out there, if that's something you celebrate. Uh, I am celebrating it by editing this video all day, partly of course because my girlfriend is still stuck in the UK because of travel restrictions. Uh, speaking of thanks though, uh, I'm incredibly grateful for all you guys out there who are watching this video and especially to those who are supporting it uh, in any number of different ways. It's incredibly humbling and amazing to me that so many people have come together to make this project a reality and also means of course that I can continue to document uh, this whole process. Thanks again and I'll see you in two weeks.